Hey, Foot Clan, before we start today's show, I want to remind you not just about the Ultimate Draft Kit that you can find at ultimatedraftkit.com that is available right now, but about the UDK Plus, Plus. And, and what is launching on Thursday, Mike. That's got Mike so excited. The Draft Analyzer is making its debut this week, July 1st. That's part of the UDK Plus, and that's going to give you the opportunity to import your team or add your team your full roster, and get a breakdown from the three of us. We're going to grade your team. We're going to grade each of your position groups. We're going to give you UDK insights specific to your team, tell you who your difference maker is, some action plan information about how to improve that team. Tell you which one of the three of us likes your team the best. That's right. And then you'll be able to uh, see that full report. You'll be able to share it, and it's going to be uh, just a great addition to the UDK+. Plus. So you can Plus! Check, you can check that out at ultimatedraftkit.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday, June 29th. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway with you. The end of June draws near. Yeah. I don't know why that, that was. Long. That was it? I, I couldn't wait for the follow-up to that. I was like, oh, you, uh, you have my attention, Mike. No, that was it. No, but the but you are correct. I'm just the saying, end of June a dramatic is reading <laughs> of the calendar. It's definitely coming soon. Today. You did make it sound ominous. Now, it's uh, it's Tuesday. June 29th. The Ooh. end is near. Uh, we're recording this on Monday, and we have a great show for you today. We have an ADP price check episode. We're going to go through a handful of names, see where they're going in drafts, maybe change where they're going in drafts, depending on what we uh, bring up and talk about and debate, discuss. Got some NFL news to talk about as well. Maybe a dynasty download. I'm not Ooh. sure. I'm not sure. Whoa. We'll see how I'm feeling. But I mean, this is a fantasy football show, but there is like a chance that the Phoenix Suns made the finals. There's no chance. It happened. I mean, so we have to shoot our shot right now, and obviously yes. they won by double digits. Remember oh. the big plays? I just wanted last night's game to be a blowout, and thank goodness it was. <laughs> oh, I man. mean, oh, Suns in five. <laughs> In the finals, oh. fantastic. You are poking the oh, devil man. in the butt oh, right I now. will because we <laughs> blew them out like we should. Go, Suns. Yeah, what a game that was. That, oh, that man. Is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but the good news is, Mike, I mean, you said July's on the way, and I, I mean, I had an anniversary trip with my wife planned, but we have successfully moved that to accommodate the Suns being in the final. That's right. And uh priorities. It really what I was I was married to the Suns before I was married to her. That's all I'm saying. Look, fair is fair. Uh the the point I was going to get to is the end of June draws near. That means uh the beginning of July, you know that the two coincide the right? on, a, on a regular basis. But Saturday you're going to want to check your podcast app because there will be a another episode Three a week now of the from fantasy footballers. Yeah, three a week for all of July, and then five a week from August through December. Yeah, you baby. said from here on out, and I guess you're technically right. There's at least three a week here That's on out. That's what I meant. But then we go to five in August, and um, hold on to your butts because mm -hmm. we got 18 weeks of football this year. Yes, we've been really, really exercising, working out, ready to go for well, 18 weeks. Because some, some of us have. My, Mike has been – Mike's doing week 18 by himself is what we're saying. Got to get that cardio up, son. <sighs> Need to get back on that bike. Yeah? Is that coming soon? Yeah. Ride number two is coming soon. <laughs> oh, no. All right. Quick question of the day. Um, How much do you guys factor strength of schedule into your rankings and projections? So – for a point of clarity, this is not the schedule, meaning which weeks you're playing and are they playing in the playoffs against the – because that type of stuff, when I'm ranking people, I don't factor in in the slightest. It, right. It makes no difference. Um, but as far as the actual strength of schedule, 
I do factor it in a little bit. Usually, so we have these team by team uh, docs that we go in, these spreadsheets that we, we've made and kind of upgraded year after year after year to help us uh, with our projections. And in there is a strength of schedule from the previous year and, and the upcoming projection for this current year. And, and the way that I use it is if I see a team, you know, a guy had an outlier season, just, you know, real high car right. career high for yards per carry. And it coincides with, oh, he had a super easy strength of schedule. And then I might adjust if this next year does not project to be a good one. So I do factor it into each team on a team by team basis, but it's, it's so case sensitive that it doesn't affect the majority of players. It's really just for the outliers. That's how I use it. Mike, do you have anything to add? I, there? I do not. Jason laid it out very well. And I think it, it goes hand in hand with the discussions we have on, you know, that people bring up about drafting defenses and um, like the variability year to year. Like the NFL has a lot of parity. There is a lot of change that happens. I mean, you could just look at the uh, the NFC West last year and the injuries that took place for San Francisco. That was, right. you know, they're projected to be a top tier team and they went through a really rough stretch. So it's not everything. Uh, there will be a lot of change, but you can stare at some divisions and, you know, I think we brought up, uh, you know, Pittsburgh's still going to play that Baltimore defense and the Browns defense a couple of times. Mm -hmm. So you do know uh, a little bit of what to expect, and that does and it's really, factor in. It's more for the medium around. You know, this is an ADP price check. It's for those mid-range fellas because the top-end guys, uh, this has just been shown and proven time after time after time. Don't worry too much about the strength of schedule. Your great players beat up on great defenses. The you know the, if you're good, you're going to play. You're going to score. You're going to get yours. YouTube.com/slash the fantasy footballers. If you want to watch this show, subscribe. Click the bell. You'll know what we're doing over here. We do a lot of live streams and things. Oh, the glamour shot's not up anymore. Did we no. get that? Did somebody win that? I don't know if we've chosen the winner yet. Some, okay, somebody lost that. Yes, uh, somebody lost by winning that. Yes. So someone had like there was a shocking amount of comments of people actually wanting this thing. I, I mean, it's I think it's great. I think the person, the 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 subject of the photo is very worthy handsome. of being on the wall. Very very handsome. Uh, I was shocked how many people actually really wanted this thing. And someone like yes, the I was asked, did I get someone wiring me the the ten thousand dollars? Which yes. And then I took ten thousand and one. And ten thousand too. So if you have ten thousand and ten dollars, mm. it could be yours. I'm going to be a millionaire by the time this thing's over. There are fellas. five thousand entries for it right now. Not, Not all have sent money though. At FootClanGiveaway.com, five thousand entries. I just want to see a picture of its final destination <laughs> uh, up on a wall. What room did they yeah. choose? What that should this? be a prerequisite for winning. Like you need to send us a picture of where it went. What is this thing going to do? That belongs in a game room. Inspire like, people. It's very big. It's a very, it's, it's a very big picture. It's going to cost us a little bit to ship it to you. <laughs> what I was thinking is we just need to get Jason's recently shared video from his trip to California. Oh, oh the suntan lotion one. And maybe screenshot sun, that. Sunscreen sun shimmy. Sun, oh, is that what? Sunscreen that shimmy. It's been named the sunscreen shimmy. That's okay. right. Okay. Oh, my gosh. I like it. Yeah, you were um, on display. Let's put it that way. <laughs> but we could, we could auction that off for charity. Yeah, got to NFT that thing. And no charities here. No charities. Okay. <laughs> News time. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. Jaguars beat reporter Tony Smith expects second-year running back James Robinson to be, quote, heavily involved and see most, if not all, of the goal line work in 2021. This is a fantasy disaster that is currently taking place in Jacksonville. The, the disaster started in the draft when they had a free square like you can't believe of James Robinson being incredible as an undrafted free agent rookie, and then you spend a first round pick on a player. I'm not arguing that that ETN doesn't have first round talent, but you didn't need to take him, and they did. And then immediately after the draft, they you have uh, Coach uh, Meyer saying, "Well, ETN's going to be our pass catching guy," and then he's, which is like uh, that's that's kind of weird. And then you go to the, the OTAs, and he's just working with wide receivers, which is whatever. They're working on his hands. But it's, you have all of these things moving in the direction of such a fantasy meltdown and disaster for w 
being in on Robinson, being in on ETN. I like I've I finally seen enough of this smoke that is coming out of Jacksonville. I've adjusted my numbers. I have I moved ETN down and I moved Robinson up. Neither are in a place where I really want them for for fantasy. It depends on the ADP, but like I there is there is so much being reported on this running back situation that I'm not ignoring it anymore and just saying, ah, well, the first rounder is going to eventually take over. Uh, he, yeah, he could, but this is a this is a real situation that is brewing. It's a problem. The two running backs in Jacksonville that have made massive fantasy impacts in recent years have both had every bit of the work on every down. Right. When Fournette surprised the world, it came by there being no depth chart behind him. When James Robinson came out of nowhere last year, he was the only player on the field that doesn't diminish his talent to say that, you know, there's going to be another guy there, but it diminishes the opportunity. He should be out there. I don't think any of us doubt that he should get playing time. Um, but, I mean, where do you – I'll skip ahead here. We'll, we'll stay in the news. But let, why don't you just shoot your shot where James Robinson's going right now? If we're doing an ADP price check today, tell me where you think James Robinson is going in drafts because I've got the answer. I imagine he's going – in the sixth round, he he's. Yeah, but where? Uh, where in the sixth? Yeah, because now I could just say I was, sixth round. I was be between tied. the fifth and sixth, so I'm gonna go early in the sixth. Okay, I was between six and seven, so okay. I'll go second half of the sixth round. Uh, you're both very close. Six oh five. Oh man! Oh, I think Jay. Wait, we were yeah. basically. Uh, I you win, win. You but win. it's very very close. Yeah, yeah that's the RB twenty eight. So that's actually not as far down as I thought. Like there are. Storylines in the offseason that that put certain players uh, almost on the do not draft list. I think for some, Josh Jacobs is there with Kenyon Drake's situation right. in Las Vegas. And for I think me, James Robinson's on that list for a lot of people. For me, James Robinson is is very close to on that list. I you know, you say running back twenty eight. Well, he beat that. Yeah, he very well might beat that. I don't I don't look at that and say, Oh, he can't be better than the running back twenty eight, but I don't want him. I don't want – like, the, what is the upside? The upside is not that he's the ever down back getting 80% of the touches like last year. That's That can't happen again. I realize he has finished well, but like you said, he finished because he was the only show in town. And even if he is the goal line back, he does not project to be the receiving back. And even though he is talented, he's not the most talented. So eventually, I, I feel like when you're drafting James Robinson, you're just – going to be left holding the bag and maybe there's some dollars in the bag and you could say it's not worthless but it does it's not you're you're not going and buying a car with the few bucks in that bag no i i as a dynasty manager with james robinson on my team you should be happy i don't view him as having much if does that make sense like i'm not i don't look at my roster construction in my dynasty league and say that he is solving a need for my team right but Directly after the draft, how how do you uh, snapshot of Andy Holloway? The 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 uh, round one has just ended. How you felt about James Robinson then? And I don't how feel you, much different, really. No, because I don't think this is this isn't news to me. I agree. Like I I think ETN may take over more of the workload by the end of the year, but that's what I always thought. I mean, I I didn't think ETN's coming out as three down back week one. But the, I figured Robinson would just come out and be completely unpredictable as to when I can play him. The the way that it, the situation has changed to me is the team, it feels now like the team will actually give Robinson a shot instead of, you were great on this team last year. We weren't here. Don't care. Like, do well, you, hopefully he impresses. Do you fit into our, and that's, what, that's yeah. my point, is now maybe he's actually going to get a shot to be out there on the field and he works better in there as a as a grinder than they thought and maybe he's a maybe he's a better inside runner than ETN is at this point and instead of just saying you're the first round pick you're the this guy that we have drafted and anointed to be to be our guy it's so frustrating and you that walk they, into the job the the way you win in at the NFL level especially when you have holes to fill on defense is you take a free square at running back and you yes, take one you at do. quarterback when you got a rookie contract mm -hmm. yes. and they had the opportunity to be in both situations and um, well, I, I feel like Mike, you need to get your deck of cards ready because this <laughs> this team in in its entirety. I mean, this is more to me when I look at this. I see that what's going on in camp right now is they are flat out saying, "Rooks, I know you're high draft 
capital, but you have to earn it. This is how we coach. Nothing's given. You are not the starting running back. He's going to be involved. You are not the starting quarterback. Like, they're still doubling down on, you know, Trevor's not ready. He is not ready to be a starter. Like, but he but he is, but and he's, he's going to start, and we all know it. And so it's like, yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, you're you're starting Gardner week This one? is James Robinson's <laughs> team. Well, okay. I don't feel like they're saying this is James Robinson's team, just that he – he will have the chance, and it's a mess. It uh, is. Let's talk about another rookie. Uh, ESPN's Nick Wagner believes Trey Sermon looks poised to make an impact as a rookie. Uh, yeah, made a strong first impression, primary, uh, particularly as a pass catcher out of the backfield. Looks poised to make an impact as a rookie, as long as it carries over to training camp and the start of the year. So he's poised to make an impact as long as he makes an impact. It's a professional <laughs> hedge. Um, you know, well done, Nick Wagner. The, yeah. the, that's how you do it. He's going to be great so long as he continues to get the ball and do well. <laughs> to be great. Um, <laughs> I love but it. But the reality here is what we said when – my name is Jeff – Wilson went down, which is he has an opportunity to show out, and what he has not done – and some people have done this with Kyle Shanahan before. Get hurt? Is just, well. He know, hasn't gotten hurt not, yet? Not yet. Knock on wood. No, but has really found them found their way into his doghouse. Disappointed him. He's shown out. He's done what you hope he does with the opportunity to show out. And so, uh, you Making know. Making a good first impression when you don't have most certain you don't have Wilson there. Yeah. You've got a chance. And, and when his number's called, it gives us more confidence that he will fit this scheme and do well. Let me ask you an annoying question, Mike. Uh, Trey Sermon in the seventh or James Robinson in the seventh? Oh, my goodness in the seventh gracious. Round? Oh. <laughs> because I think we know what, what San Francisco wants to do. If everybody yeah. was healthy, it would be Mostert, it would be Wilson, and then it would be Sermon. Yeah, it'll be all of them. So I think I, I'd still go James Robinson, but, but what a question that is. I think I do as well. Uh, I think I lean James Robinson, just be the – the known, not known, but the projected projection of known volume. Where, but the Sir, uh, Trey Sermon upside is is still higher. I mean, you have because the, the the Forty ers whatever built on the the native burial ground, whatever dark magic they messed with <laughs> over there, it's it's just keeps knocking people out. Yeah, it's hard not to. You just can't bank on any of this running back room staying healthy, I, and so why not take a shot? later in your drafts on a very talented player that will be the future because Mostert has a year. So they may have great plans for him. And I, I'm speaking as a dynasty manager of Raheem Mostert. I want the world for him this year. But your future is probably not him. Yeah, the way that I look at this is in draft season, James Robinson will have more value come week one, two, three, four. Um, and so if you have to draft one, I would lean towards him. But I – Again, I said James Robinson's a guy I don't want on my team because it doesn't fit the archetype of run, uh, running backs that I draft. That's the same exact thing to me with Trey Sermon. I think the second half of the year, I'm going to much prefer to have Trey Sermon on my team help me win some weeks than James Robinson when I think it'll be more the ETN show. It's just funny because I believe I offered you James Robinson for Trey Sermon in you our did. dynasty league. It was a quick denial. Um McCall Hardman has made sizable improvements. Ooh. Do you do you buy into the yeah. <laughs> do you buy into the report from the Athletics Nate Taylor? Yes. McCall Hardman, uh, whether it's oh, his route no. running, his We're consistency. We're not doing this again, are we? I am. You are. I am, and I don't blame anyone for not doing it again. But oh, I'm not doing it because I've watched enough McCall Hardman to say that he will never be, ever, a complete wide receiver. I've seen him for make too many mistakes for too long to believe that he will ever be able to, quote, shoulder the load, I would say. I, I, I completely understand that. I mean, you, you watch him, and he's got flashes of brilliance, but he's got some boneheaded mistakes. Um, and that's why his snap count, you know, he's – he he hasn't even worked his way up the you know the the pecking order before this season, even when opportunities presented themselves. But when I look at this from a dynasty viewpoint, which when we're talking McCall Hardman, I think that's he's more going applicable. In, going into year three, yeah, he's going into year three. He's only twenty three years old. Look, I know Travis Kelsey is locked in as the guaranteed. Uh, he's going to be the number one tight end forever, but he's actually not. He is older. He will fade out. 
uh, Sammy Watkins is gone, and you've got to have more than just Tyreek Hill. McCall Hardman has shown enough flashes of good that I am willing to believe in the long-term success of McCall Hardman because they will need someone else uh, over the next couple of years. He's still under contract for a while. Okay. So that's I, I it's hard to start. Yeah, deep leagues. I get it. I, I did make a trade offer a couple of weeks ago. Uh, mm. You know, he's just one of those players. Like, if you want to say who's someone you could just because nobody's holding on to yeah, McCall yeah, yeah. Hardman with, yeah. you know, hands of stone like this is he's just fodder, a uh, little extra, mm -hmm. you know, sprinkle on top of the ice cream in a trade. That's fair. Uh, the Steelers released David DeCastro. He was one of the only two starting linemen set to return See, from last year. And Jason's shaking his head, and the uh, the reaction on Twitter was very visceral to uh, DeCastro being released. He graded out horrifically bad last year. Now, it's pro football focus, and you take that with how you believe about their site and their grading, but... I don't think that this is a necessarily a negative move for the offensive line for for Pittsburgh because if you're getting bad play out of someone else who costs your team less, it, it I don't it's it seems like a net win and, and he could be better. Now there's DeCastro has said there's there's a lot of underlying you know wink business stuff going on uh, having to do with the designation of his injury. Some things that look a little bit cloudy for the Pittsburgh franchise. But as far as people going, oh, you released DeCastro, what are you doing? Yeah, I don't think you're. I don't think you're getting any worse by letting him. Well, from, it's hard to get worse. Yeah, from a that's that's my point. From like, a franchise standpoint, from a franchise standpoint, I understand what you're saying. You're paying a lot of money for a guy who uh, it wasn't that good. So it might be better for your team um, in the end to make this transaction but for fantasy football I don't think their offensive line is actually better they might save more money and it's better for the dollar but I do view this as as a negative I mean goodness gracious talent this is an plus entire, consistency is what you need on a line this is an entire new O-line that is yeah. yikes apotamus <laughs> you're on fire today uh that was today's news and it's notes a very rare animal presented yep. by <laughs> I said a yikes apotamus yeah Sleeper supported us with the news and notes today. Switch your league to the fastest growing fantasy platform today. Get in there. Get your league on to Sleeper. And before we get to all the average draft position price checks, I want to thank IP Vanish. Uh, look, ADP, IP Vanish, that's how you can remember it. It stands for a virtual private network. IP Vanish is the I personally use this when I travel. I don't like getting on other people's free Wi-Fi Protect and yourself. not knowing the security of my devices. You could put it on anything, your computers, your tablets, your phones, even things like a fire stick uh, when you're streaming media. Whatever you want, the Internet will be protected for you when you are on IP Vanish. Make sure that you're safe. Make sure you're secure. No one can get your information, and nobody can block you. Yeah, from content you can you can get around those restrictions as well you have your own ip address can't be tracked uh by anyone and again when you use public wi-fi which we all do now eh, you know it's not not the best so uh you can go to ipvanish.com slash footballers and you claim 65 percent savings they have plans starting at just three dollars 49 cents or 31.49 a year this is the time to sign up. Our discount, their current promotions, you can get a VPN for 65% off their usual offering, and it's the best of the best, even rated 4.7 out of 5 on Trustpilot, and that's with more than 6,000 reviews. So show them some love. They're repeat sponsors. Remember, it's ipvanish.com slash footballers to get the deal and start protecting yourself online. If you listen to this podcast, that means you play fantasy football. If you listen to this podcast, you play fantasy football, and you win. Darn right you do. And when you win, you got to get the gear. Fantasychamps.com. That's where we get all of our trophies, all of our rings, our belts, high-quality stuff over there. They make it real easy. Every league needs a trophy that can get passed around. And it's nice. You know, the trophy, sometimes you don't you don't have it. But you, you want to know how you remember your championship with a ring. You want to get a free ring. I a do. free ring. Upgrade your league. Grab one of their trophies, grab one of their belts, and you use the code FREERING when you check out, and you're going to get a free $59 ring. Let's say, look, 
Everyone's pulling in. You're getting the – you're the trophy. You're the commission. You're taking care of it. Don't tell them about the free just ring. Get just get yourself a free just one. Just get yourself a free it's ring. It's free. Yeah. No, no sweat you after back. show them the bill and be like, no, that's how much the trophy was. <laughs> so chip in and get me a free ring. So buy a belt, buy a trophy at fantasychamps.com and use the code oh, free ring. And don't forget, uh, they, the draft boards, if you do like the yep. – if you usually have a live in-person draft and you use the draft boards, they now have fantasy footballers – Draft boards there because oh, baby. fantasy champs That's the best. Hot. Big fan of those guys. <laughs> Shout out. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. And that's a free that's a free championship ring, not a doorbell, right? Correct. Right. Okay. Both Got are it. good products. Yeah. <laughs> One right. protects your door and one protects uh, your finger. Yeah, from people thinking you're not a champion. That's right. Got it. All right, we are into the ADP price check. Uh, we're going to be guessing the eight. You guys did so well earlier. You set a standard for this segment. You were both right on the round of James Robinson. Let's try. <laughs> let's try a player that Jason will have to push through his utter despising of. Tenth round, eleventh. Uh, this would be wide receiver. Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, he is our consensus wide receiver, twenty-seven. You know, he started his career three straight wide receiver six or better years. So oh, they were great. He was going into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, he was early, <laughs> unbelievable. He has now finished outside the top fifteen wide receivers in each of the last four years: wide receiver eighty-three, sixteen, twenty-six, and eighty-five, which is also known as. The greatest hits for Jason's arguments. Um, where do you think he's going right now? What, what's your guess? I know that there Go are ahead, a hater. <laughs> there are a lot of great wide receivers going in the fourth round, so he's going to go well behind that. Um, I'm going to go seventh. That's probably just seventh round. I don't know. I wouldn't take him in the seventh. So uh, people are dumb. Sixth, fifth. You are dumb. Yeah, it's probably me. But um, he finished a week as the number one wide receiver last year. Yeah, he did. You aren't drafting wide receivers in the seventh round that can do that. Okay, I amend sixth, sixth round, final <laughs> offer. <laughs> no, I'll you're go the seventh. Six oh six. You're wrong. Fifth round. Yeah, he he feels like a fifth round to me. So. I'll, I, that's the nice thing about Beckham this year is you aren't giving elite ADP price for him. I'm going, oh, like five oh nine. The answer is six oh three. Oh, I was so close with my amend, my amended six oh six. I win. Uh, wide receiver twenty six. So, despite Jason burying him, our consensus ranking has him at twenty seven, which is really close to his average draft position. Nobody trusts him. I don't, Mike. You wouldn't say you trust Beckham, right? Oh no. So, but you see more upside from him late than other wide receivers. Yeah, and if I mean, guess we're Tyler playing... Boyd versus Beckham. Oh or, yeah, give me Odo Beckham. T Higgins versus Beckham. Well, I don't know. Would J Jason? Do you want the you want T Higgins or Odo Beckham? Uh, I the would. Bengals wide receiver one, as you would. So call this it. is this is an ADP price check show. Um, I would imagine T Higgins is going far later. And I Brooks the, will Brooks will figure that out. Yeah, for tell us. me where T Higgins is going. I would guess he's going at least like ninth round. In which case, I would take T Higgins. I would not draft T Higgins over Odell Beckham. The upside is clearly there with Beckham. Um, we know he has done it. He's he has not aged out. He's going to be twenty nine years old this year, which is fine for a wide receiver, but it's certainly not the prime. They you know wide receivers usually peak around twenty seven, and it's getting younger and younger. So he's on the you know the downturn of his career, but that's it's it's hard to tell what that arc is based on the last four no, injury riddled seasons. It's tough, and he's not he's not the Beckham of the first three years. What's wild is the ADP he's at now in that sixth round. Do you know who went there last year at that spot? Odell Beckham. <laughs> Well, no, <laughs> probably. Hollywood was around that area. Oof. Stephon Diggs? Yeah. Ooh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, of course he was baby. there. Man, that was, that was stupid. Is he well, this year's yes, Stephon Diggs? in hindsight, yes. Well, now let's say oh, let's man. say That's he's, a deal. <laughs> okay, now let's let's work through Odell Beckham really quick. Did you find Higgins ADP Brooks? Higgins is just barely after Odell. He's That's in the sixth. Uh, he's in the sixth round. Whoa. 
Yeah, because you won't stop talking about him being the Bengals wide receiver one. I will. I haven't really been talking him up that much. Um, you do every time you talk Jamar Chase down. You talk T Higgins up just by association. Yes. Okay, that's fair. Um, so w with Odell Beckham, let's just have a realistic outlook here. Okay. All right. Let's assume that he is not in the absolute peak prime of his career because he's going to be 29 years old and he's coming off of, you know, a couple years of injury, but that he is healthy all year plays a full slate. Do you think that he is a top 15 wide receiver in the run heavy Browns offense? I do not. If he plays 17, I still do not. Probably not. Yeah, I lean probably not, but I can see that happening. You have weeks one through five, so you have you know five games here. In that time span, he was averaging almost eight targets a game. Now, I, yeah, I, I guess you can say he didn't do much with them. He had a couple strong finishes, wide receiver 15 in week two, wide receiver one in week four. But we also saw over the second half, Baker Mayfield become more comfortable with this new offense from Stefanski. You have, I mean, it's hard because even if, let's say Julio was in Cleveland, he just landed, right? right? Okay. And he's their one. Like, we're not going to be Bullish. overly enthusiastic about Julio in that offense with that team. Yeah, it's a lower volume. But my point is, like, Baker has been through it where he's he's had to run a new system basically every year of his career, and now you have some actual continuity with – Continuity. Is that not a word No, now? that's not it. What continuity, you idiot. Am I? Continuity, that's what it is. <laughs> Dang it. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, he has some contiguosity moving into the next year that's of his right. career. Um, so, I don't know. I, I'm leaving room for – Boom shakalaka. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Jason, for dunking on me. Um I'm, I agree with you, Baker. You should leave some room for it to happen. I agree with you. Baker got better the second half of last year. My only contention, and, and the reality is... And he didn't get better because Odell Beckham was out of the lineup. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Odell Beckham missed that part of the year? That is the stupidest mm. argument that when It's a happened every time, though. It's it, He spreads the ball around. He doesn't feel this pressure. To, there are plenty of examples of diva wide receivers being bad for a team. I, I think this is one of those examples. That's where I – I mean, it is narrative-y, um, and, and we like to be more stats-driven and more analytics-focused, and, and so I get that. My argument is based more on, um, you know, the history of injuries and the fact that it, outside of Eli Manning, he's never really done what we've hoped, um, but that is a narrative that has existed before, where a diva wide receiver has not necessarily been good for a quarterback. All right, let's talk about Chase Edmonds running back for the Arizona Cardinals because wide range of opinions. I don't know if you guys saw this. He doesn't even have a proper face scan in Madden right now, Chase Edmonds. I did see that. Oh, why are they doing him dirty like that? I know. Get him into Madden if he's got the potential to uh, you know, be a top-tier runner this That's year. That's nonsense. But what do you think the ADP is of Chase Edmonds? Because I think us being out here in, in the Valley – uh, we have a different perspective on how the team might utilize them. I think outside of the Valley, it's a very mathematical equation for people where David Johnson, uh, he left and Kenyon Drake left. And now the next man up is Chase Edmonds. So, you know, w when have you ever heard of Chase Edmonds? Oh, well, you heard of him when he scored three times against the Giants. Or you, you heard about these boom games that made headlines for fantasy, but maybe you're not watching him week in and week out. Very smart, talented player. 25 years old, 5'9", 210. I believe he doesn't have a goal line carry in the NFL. Well, uh, he has one. one carry inside the five in three years. So where do you think he's going? Because I think – Too high. Yeah, I that's how I view him. Too high is the answer. I think they view him as somebody with like a, an upside that is unknown. So it, yes, the ambi you know, maybe like somebody viewed Gibson last year or something. I feel pretty confident about who the fourth round running backs are. So I'm going to go after that. I'll go fifth round. Um, because he's still got perceived upside. That, again, I think, he's a, I think he's a late third, early fourth. Oh, ooh. I was with Jason. I don't think he's – he made his way out of the that fourth round running back dead zone, I I believe. I, I think he's in the fifth round. So, whatever. That, that'll be my answer for the, the ADP, and I'll say like 504. So, if he's 504, that's too high for you? I'll go 405. Oh. Ooh. 
five oh one blue jeans. <laughs> five ten. Okay. I was dyslexic. <laughs> Uh, okay, that's five, RB25. 510 is not too bad. because it, No, it isn't. Because, again, Have leaving, we done some work here? Leaving room. Like it, it, Chase Edmonds could be the guy. I just do not see it projecting out that way with how the team has appreciated him in that auxiliary role. His just the, the composition of his body compared to James Conner, who is a, a bigger, bruising type of running back. Now, he, Okay, James, the, if James Conner's awful though, if if he's done, but I don't think he's. I don't think James Conner. Looking at James Conner last year, I don't think he was done. He I just got he, hurt a lot. He was on the. He he has a ticket to get off on Duntown here very soon. It, it's, I mean, if if you're looking at the Steelers' offensive line and their offense, and you were saying like how disappointed you were with that, Robert or uh, Conner had success regardless Connor, of those things. Yeah, he had some success. Because that team facilitates those opportunities for him, and he was their only player. But I think what you just what, when you watch him play, this is not the same player from two and a half years ago when he filled in for Lev Bell. He doesn't have the exact same quickness. I don't know how much of the passing game work he's going to like. This is not pumping the brakes on Chase Edmonds. To me, is not a pro James Conner take. No. It is a it, it is a reality that they're going to use both players, and that will cap the upside. <clears throat> Yeah, I, I view this. Whoa. <laughs> you all right? More I'm, I'm back. Yeah. It, it will be a split back, backfield for sure. And the upside is with Chase Edmonds because of the injury history for James Conner. If you want to draft Chase Edmonds hoping that he becomes the de facto guy when Conner inevitably misses four or five games, then then I that's that's – you know, one thing you can try to hope for, but you, I don't believe Chase Edmonds will ever receive the guy role on his own. They're they're a great offense. You don't have to be the only guy in Arizona to contribute. Kenyon Drake got a ton of work. Chase Edmonds still finishes the top twenty four running back seven times in sixteen weeks last year with Kenyon Drake. Yeah, if so it hits big plays. He I'd can do certainly it. rather have Chase Edmonds than James Conner. No question. Uh, Don't care about the goal line. Like, I'd much rather have, hmm. I, I mean, multiple top 10 weeks last year for Chase Edmonds just being a con – I mean, he, he had a top 10 week with three attempts. He had a top 10 week with five attempts. Yeah, yeah but, it, but, but you're the not – pass catcher. But the thing is, is because of that, you're not playing him in those weeks. You can ha – in best ball, that's fine. I think you'll be able to play him as a flex every week of the year. No questions asked. If that's, on this offense. If that is true, then that you think he's – uh, I think 5'10 is fine. 5'10 is great because you have the injury upside with James Conner and you have a flex-worthy starter every uh, every week. I don't think you're going to feel comfortable flexing him every week. And I would rather have James Conner. Uh, he's going a bit later. Not, not too much later, I believe, than Chase Edmonds. And, Jay, to your point, it was a split backfield last year. Kenyon Drake saw fifty four percent of the snaps. Chase Edmonds forty seven percent. Like it was that was already a split backfield in terms of playing time, but Kenyon Drake was the power runner. He was the power guy, and I think that's what James Conner is. And now you have uh, the upgrades that the Arizona Cardinals have made to their offensive line, specifically getting Rodney Hudson in here to play center. Those goal line up the middle carries. Oh man, at, uh, they're going to work now. Where does Cliff want to run? Right up the middle. Right up the middle. And it's going to work out It's going to help Chase doing the same thing. They're not going to not run Chase interior at all. But goal I mean, line will go to sure. – I believe goal line is going to go to Connor. Well, he was the. you said it was a split backfield last year. Chase finished it, at 28 at the position. So uh, I think Kenyon Drake has more had more in the tank last year than, than Chase uh, – Do we know how James far Connor apart is. these guys are in ADP? Brooks, can you pull up? It's got to be pretty massive. Right now – I can give you that. I was showing um, Connor in the eighth. Oh, I would nice. rather have Connor in yeah, the eighth than Connor. spending a fifth. Hey, the fifth round is chock full of great wide receivers. Yeah, he's at five ten. I, I I take um, I would take Chase in the upside there because he's twenty five, and he's a he's a good player. So I'm you know I still think that we're all three lower on Chase than some others are, but I can see the path. People. People see it with Arizona's offense, and I think for good reason. I mean, this is a top five scoring offense potentially this year. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. James I mean, Conner's only twenty six. Does that he, surprise you to know they're a year apart? 
Yeah, it does. But he because he doesn't look like it anymore. I mean, unless you're talking injuries or whatever happened last year. Connor's two full seasons removed from his um, fantasy rel- meeting fantasy expectations. Okay, that's is that a saying. fair way to put it? Well, running back twenty six last year at the end of the season, and I don't have the the numbers in front of me, but before he got hurt, he had finished outside of the top thirty just three times, and he right. was he was. He was very good for fantasy football last year through week 11. Hey, man, as a Cardinal fan, I'm, I'm down. If, if you yeah. want to tell me both players are talented, I'm fine with that. Uh, let's go with uh, Will Fuller. Will Fuller right now, ADP price check. Yeah. The answer is too late. Yeah, he is. It's he, too late, and it, 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 may, it probably matches my ranking of him, which is too low. Too low. Too late and too low. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, because everyone's too scared and too uh yeah, I'm is too causing uh, a problem. You are right. I'm too uh scared. So where do you think he's so actually like going? I think he's probably going in the uh, – Oh, he's going late, man. Uh, I'll go – Ninth eighth, round? I was say eighth, eighth round? round, ninth round. Yeah, I, I, eight, I agree. Ten. Eight, ten is where I'll go. Oh, man, that that sounds really sounds, spot on. It sounds stupid. I'm going to go nine, oh, nine, oh, two, and I'm going to die. I'm going <laughs> to die over here. What is going on? I don't know. <laughs> too much suns. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, you were Mike. Final answer. Where are you going? I'll go one. Uh, Price is right over Jason. So nine oh three. Was he nine oh two? Okay. All right. Nine oh three. He, he, he is going <laughs> seven oh nine. Uh, okay. Okay. So I guess I won. Yeah, you did. Uh, wide receiver thirty two off the board. Setting the league on fire. Number you, five most consistent wide receiver last year with. Uh, he will miss week one. Yes. Yes. Which will mean he will go later. <laughs> Or, you know, it's a reflection of him going later here. 11 games last year, 879 and 8. Doesn't get to play with Deshaun Watson, but super talented player. This is a call your shot, breakout offense moment because what's going to happen here is it's a nebulous wide receiver core. You have Devontae Parker, you've got Will Fuller, um, you've got Mike Gasicki at tight end, you've got Jalen Waddle, their high end draft pick. Because you don't know who it's going to be as the wide receiver one, most people completely stay you don't know away. Hua for Tua. I I keep hearing it. Oh come um, on, the Danny! Come on, that was great. Did you say you don't uh, know like, Hua? Yeah, of course he's saying you don't know who it's going to be. Uh, oh come on, yeah, give, come on. I mean, that's a passing grade. Uh, let's see here. Oh man, it, I'll give a it a five. five. Really? Is, is yeah. that a pass? Do you have a ten? It's yeah. So it's, it's a, one to nine. That's a pass. A, a four. Yeah. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> oh man, if the Suns hadn't just won that NBA f- <laughs> that game last night, oh, you'd be man. in a bad mood, huh? But here's here's the thing. Um, a lot of times when you're looking for a late round breakout player, you want a nebulous situation. You want a place where it's not clear who the star is going to be. Will Fuller when Stephon he's been Diggs on last year. Exactly, when when well, Stephon Diggs was brought in to be the guy. You didn't know if he was going to be good, but the situation wasn't like, is it going to be Cole Beasley? Is it going to be Stephon Diggs? Yeah. You knew it was going to be Diggs. Well, who do, who do you think it's going to be in Miami? Well, I'm just saying it could be Devontae Parker. It could be Jalen Waddle. I don't think I, – I think we – I think it's very fair to say that Will Fuller is the best, most experienced wide receiver they have. He is, I'm just without using, a doubt, the best, most experienced like wide receiver. Like, we had lots of have. reasons to doubt Diggs, right? We had these arguments to doubt Diggs coming in. He had yeah, they, multiple they, years in Minnesota where he was putting up lower production, never going to get it, never going to have the volume. The argument against Diggs last year, at Josh least for Allen. me, was 100% related to the offense and the quarterback. Which so, is the same situation. Yeah, so this is a, a bet on Will Fuller is a great bet for someone who believes in Tua. If yes. you think that Tua has it, yeah. he was, you know, the tanking for Tua was just a couple years ago where he was the superstar future generational player for some NBA uh, NFL franchise. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, and, and so uh. if you still believe in Tua, then you've got to draft Will Fuller. Um, Agreed. But I don't believe in Tua. Yeah, I believe I believe in what they've built, and I believe they've put him in a position where, much like I don't know, even like Taysom Hill had great success in a system with a great coach in New New Orleans last year. Tua has everything around him to succeed, and I believe he can do enough at the NFL level to have that breakthrough type of season. Um, I think that you you watched the highlights of Tua last year. He had eight or nine deep passes that were on the money. 
and you had drops from Jakeem Grant. You had drops from some of these weapons he was throwing the ball to, and that's been remade. So uh, I do believe. I guess you're right. I guess I am going to call my shot with Will Fuller and say that. Yeah, I'm moving him up. From a value standpoint, I think it can really happen. And I think they're the best team in the division or up there. Really? I mean, no, I think the Bills? I think they'll compete with the Bills. I'll okay. put it that way. That's fair. I think the Bills are the incumbent, but I think it'll be a battle between those teams. Um, you know, the Jets obviously run away with it. We got it. Uh, I was just kidding. Yep. I've I've moved Will Fuller up. Yeah. I will be to doing where? I will be doing this. Thirty five. Okay. Yeah. And that's the thing is is what you can get for what you will pay is how you win at fantasy. And if you're drafting him at the end of the seventh, early eighth round for what you could get, which is you could get an every week starter in Will Fuller. You could get a top 15 wide receiver. Will Fuller has the skills, and if Tua takes that step forward, it's it's done. Uh, and you don't, you know, you're not spending a lot. So, nope. All right, let's go to Joe Burrow, because I've seen some rumors mm. on Twitter lately, or conjecture, hope, optimism, I'm not sure what it was, of the breakout season for Joe Burrow, right, for fantasy purposes. He's our QB 18. You know, ranking quarterbacks is – it's a tough business <laughs> when it comes to – you know, you got to put them in a linear order, and you're not going to – even if you see a path for Burrow, you're not going to rank him necessarily as a top 12 player because other players have done it. And so – or you like a Jalen Hurts more, or you like a, a Justin Herbert more. Mm-hmm. You or guys just not coming off a catastrophic knee injury. Yeah, if you if you don't like that sort of thing, maybe he's lower. It's not my favorite. But you know, my argument when I brought Jamar Chase up as my breakout on this show was what has been true of Taylor every single year there, which is it doesn't matter if it's Andy Dalton or Joe Burrow, the rookie, he's going to throw the football forty times a game. You have three great wide receivers. You have a good pass catching running back. So all that to say, where do you think he's going, and do you do you see a breakout as one of the possible outcomes for Joe Burrow? Yeah, he's got to be going uh, in the double digit rounds. Um, I I think he's going to be round eleven. I'll go twelve. I'm, I'm going to go eleven eleven and put myself in the worst possible mm. Price Is Right rule. Um, but that is my favorite number. Yeah, I I don't know. Twelfth sounds fine. He's he's a quarterback. Nine oh seven. Okay, Whoa! that's, that's quarterback the eleven. Quarterback eleven. Brooks is shaking his head, going like he knew he had us on that one. That's why he's in here. That's Whoa, why, because okay. you saw that number and you said, "Wow, yes." So the the breakout is being predicted. So uh, through his healthy games, uh, you know the the nine games that he was before the the knee injury, he was on pace a seventeen game pace. Granted, but okay, just, he was averaging over forty attempts a game. But he was on base to throw the ball almost 700 times for nearly 4,700 yards. Now, the touchdown pace was bad, but rookie quarterback, I mean, 3.2% of your uh, attempts are turning into touchdown. That's way below the league average. He can Joe Burrow should easily get up to at least the average. So the, the question of, for Burrow... To me, is just it's health, and I don't think that we, I, I tell you we don't healthy. know yet. I tell you he's healthy, though. If you tell, even, even I give you the bona fide Joe Burrow of last year shows up week one, but you, and you add Jamar Chase, are you? But you can't because Joe Burrow in week one ran eight times for forty six yards. Like Joe Burrow is not doing that this year, at least in at okay. least the first he, month okay. or so. He said he's giving you the health. Though. <laughs> no, but Mike's right. I mean, if, even if you say he's not going to get re injured. You are taking the, like Carson Wentz came back from the ACL exactly. and he didn't run the same. Okay, Jason's UDK projections, his actual numbers on Joe Burrow have the Bengals with the third most total plays in the NFL, Makes sense. and Burrow with the fourth most attempts and completions. And I have him as my quarterback sixteen. Yeah, hey, you're the most, which I I really like that ranking. I think yeah. that that's fine for Joe Burrow. Um, if Joe Burrow was truly not injured, if he finished out the season and was coming in uh, to this year, I, I would I would probably have him in my top ten. I Whoa. do expect him to get off to a slow start. It's a guy who loves Jamar Chase right there. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a guy who loves Jamar Chase a heck of a lot more than A.J. <laughs> Green, that's for sure. Um, 104 worthless targets thrown in A.J. Green's direction. Um but, yeah, I mean, it, there's a good wide receiver core, a bad defense. Their offensive line is improved. But the reality is for fantasy at quarterbacks, 
I don't expect him to run the ball a lot, uh, especially the first half of the season. And if that's the case, it's going to take one of his strengths, one of his added, you know, at least Alex Smith level baselines of uh, rushing uh, prime Alex Smith, not sure. post leg injury Alex Smith. Um, you know, the old Aaron Rodgers baseline where you, you're running for for 350 yards. I just don't see that necessarily um, in that first half of the year. So I, he's a guy that I've been passing whenever I have the opportunity to draft him. And, and apparently if he's going, you know, in the ninth round, I, I'm fine leaving a draft with Joe Burrow. 100% fine. But in my world, that's because I took him super late in a league that didn't really care about Joe Burrow. And, you know, he's my he was the 15th quarterback taken and he's in and the you're 13th and round. And you're streaming. Yeah, exactly. Six of his 10 games, he threw one or fewer touchdowns like it the, the touch you just have to hope you don't have a Matt Ryan situation here yeah I mean he was Jamar a rookie, Chase I is going to help Jamar yeah. Chase will help uh, the who, you would say Julio Jones would should help Matt Ryan throw yeah but I, I just don't think it's a fair comparison one half of a season into Burrow's life I'm, not, I'm not calling my shot on him I'm just saying that that's you just called him Joe Ice <laughs> just a, Joe Ice that knee up Three games with zero passing touchdowns. Three games with one passing touchdown. Like that, if if a quarterback puts up two hundred and fifty and one, they have bombed your week. Like they have actively hurt your fantasy Certainly. roster. Certainly. All right, let's do a dynasty download. <laughs> dynasty download. <laughs> it's just Troutman now. <laughs> That one was great, and if you're you're listening to the show, the uh, the graphic keeps changing for this dynasty oh, that's download. Fun. And today was Jay Grizz uh, was the centerpiece. Yeah, surrounded by five trout <laughs> and one troutman. That's pretty good. All right, this is a uh, an, a dynasty riser here in our dynasty download segment. Trey Lance. Um. 21 years old, yep. 49ers, rookie quarterback. Uh, since early May, which was the draft, he's slowly risen in Dynasty 1QB startup drafts. Where are you right now with Trey Lance? You know, I'm on record saying I don't think he's going to see time this year. Not much of it. Um, I know you guys both like him. Yeah, so, I, I, for, for fantasy football... I am all in. I pushed my chips all in in our dynasty, in our rookie draft. When I what did I take him one oh seven. I took him at one oh seven. I took him before Trevor Lawrence. Uh, he just he is so young, and and if you've been following the show for the for the off season, I'm well, I'm very skeptical of Trey Lance actually making the jump to being a professional quarterback, but the decision makers in the NFL. Uh, it, for San Francisco, they mortgaged everything. I mean, multiple first-round picks to move up and take Trey Lance to be the future of the 49ers. So f for dynasty purposes, because we're in the dynasty download, I am all in. You're talking. This is another quarterback that will likely run for a th – he'll be challenging Lamar Jackson for who's going to have the quarterback rushing title of the season. Like Trey Lance will e can easily hit the 1,000 rushing yard mark and then surrounded by the talent of Debo Samuel, Ayuk, and George Kittle, of just these these yak guys, you don't have to be the best downfield passer. Like that's so he is set up for such incredible fantasy success that yes, I am I, I am all in. Now just to answer the question of of playing time this year, I think he does see the field at least half of this year. I, it would be it will be wild to see a team make that investment, that trade investment, right, and not move to the rookie. No, nope. San Francisco with everybody healthy, they could start this. They could start the season six and zero, oh, and then you're all in, it's Super Bowl or bust. And then Trey Lance perhaps doesn't get in unless Jimmy Garoppolo gets hurt. But that's that's a that's a lofty projection to say a team's going to start that on fire. Yeah, I mean, it, it really is. I think a, a huge chunk of how you value him is your projection for this season because that is an entire year of fantasy football that is either wasted or valuable, and that matters when deciding to pull the trigger on a pick. You know, you took him over Trevor Lawrence. Mm -hmm. If you knew for sure that Trevor Lawrence is starting week one and that 
Well, Trey I, I, Lance is, it, but the Trey Lance doesn't start a game this year. Right. Then it's maybe a mistake to to uh, could be them in that in that order. Could be. I believe that Trey Lance starts week one and Jimmy Garoppolo is not on this roster. I still, I still think they're going to wait for some injury and try to trade him for anything they can get. Um, like the uh, when Philly traded Bradford, right to Minnesota. Um, so I, I mean, I obviously that's a, a other world of projection as of right now. The team says that Jimmy is their starter, and if that's the case. I think it's a good team. Trey Lance shouldn't start much this year. I believe they'll hand the reins over, but I've got him at my quarterback 11. I, that's where I had him pretty much post-draft. I'd take him over Tannehill and Stafford and, and you know, the cousins, Ryan Brady, yeah. all the older guys. The uh, According to Warren Sharp, the 49ers have by far the easiest strength of schedule in the NFL for 2021. All righty. So that kind of backs up couple of arguments it could back up what mike's saying if they yeah. started you know they they've said jimmy garoppolo is their starter they've said that trey lance isn't there yet um but much like jalen hurts instantaneously had fantasy relevance i think we're all agree in agreement where if he takes over from that first moment he's going to be a valuable fantasy asset and i threw out the uh let's see so they have their bye week week six so if if, if they were going sideways, then yes. If let, let's say the team is two and if they're somehow two and three, let's let's walk the schedule. Detroit week one, one and zero. Okay, <laughs> that's that's a free win. Oh, Detroit, what are you doing? At the and it's at, it's on the road though, so it's at Detroit at Philadelphia one week oh. two. Oh, that's probably a win. Uh, that's probably two and zero. Oh. Probably uh, at home versus Green Bay week three. We can give him an L. That's yeah, fine. Let's give Two him, and one. Let's say Aaron Rodgers is a Green Bay Packer. <laughs> that would be a, a big part that, of that. I mean, either way, those two games, I say you, you go one and one in those two okay. games. Either, then, either way. Week four is versus Seattle. Okay, maybe you're two and two. Week five is on the road against Arizona. All right, maybe you're two and so three, and then you're they, switching to trailers. If, if they are two and three, that by week, that will happen. That will be the transition. But if, they are, if they're three and two or better, then – it it might take a Garoppolo injury. Yeah, because there's two. I mean, there's so many discussions with Trey Lance. There's fantasy relevance, and then there's does he develop? Is this divi you know the division two passer, the guy that right. we saw on tape? Is that going to develop? Because you're going to need both of those components. Even if you know people want to take shots at Lamar, Lamar can throw the football. I mean, um, he may have an ugly throw here or there. He may not throw it a lot, but he can throw the football. And when he was a fantasy dominator, he was able to do that. So, um. Yeah, it's going to be one of many interesting storylines at the quarterback position. We just went through two of them, like Burrow and and him. Trey and, Lance and Hurts is just and Rogers. Yeah, and if Rogers. you looking at the way the drafts unfolded, Trevor Lawrence is in Jacksonville. Zach Wilson is with the New York Jets. Trey Lance is with the San Francisco Forty Nine ers. Like one of those things is not like the other two for future situations. You're talking about he's he's a part of the last place NFC West. Yeah, 49ers? Yes, when, mm -hmm. when half of your team is, is injured. You? Uh, and and all you're of, in the best conference. All of your superstars on defense get hurt. I would still – I mean, I, I've been on record, but I would still take Trevor Lawrence. Most people would. Uh, I, w I would as Trey well. Lawrence, I, I, have, yeah. I have Trevor Lawrence ahead of uh, Lance in my dynasty rankings, um, but they are back-to-back. -back. We want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting the show, and Alvin Kamara signed full-size authentic helmet is $20 right now. That ends on Wednesday night. They have a – an authenticated uh, DeAndre Swift signed football 20 bucks right now ends on Thursday night. Hundreds of daily auctions, though. You can find your favorite player. PristineAuction.com. Use the code BALLERS. Get a $10 credit. Trying to get my authenticated DeAndre Eaton jersey. Well, after that big win. Yeah. Oh, boy. This could go sideways tomorrow, <laughs> couldn't it? All right, Foot Clan. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back on Thursday. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.